So next up, we have new discoveries hidden in Australia. Let's check it out. Australia, the land down under, home to the most daunting and scariest wildlife. It's easy to find stereotypes about this country on the internet. However, beyond the jokes and memes, Australia is definitely one of the most interesting places on our planet. In fact, it seems like year after year, interesting things surface in this country. From a hotel that's impossible to book to the largest trap door ever found, here are the 20 strangest things recently discovered in Australia. Number 20. The hotel that's impossible to book. Many people nowadays like to try out new things. With the rise of convenient booking websites, it's easier to try out new hotels and other accommodations around mm -hmm. an area. Countless people who saw this massive eye-catching building alongside a motorway outside Melbourne in Australia's Victoria State. Yeah, it just looks weird. It kind of looks like a, like a storage facility. Have tried to book a room there, but there's actually a catch here. You see, it's impossible to book a room in this place. When you pass by this place, you might be curious to see what it offers. After all, the huge name, Hotel East Link, quickly catches the attention of drivers and passers-by. However, no one ever managed to book this place. It's not because it's always jam-packed, but because it's impossible. Hotel East Link might look like an ordinary establishment at first glance, but if you observe more carefully, you'll notice that this quote-unquote hotel's placement doesn't really make sense. For one, oh. it's in the middle of nowhere. And when you look at it from its sides, you'll realize it's pretty small for an actual hotel. Hotel East Link is about 65 feet tall, 39 feet wide, and about 16 feet thick. At night, some of the windows are lit up, making those driving past it think there's someone inside its rooms. But in reality, it's not a hotel, but an art installation designed by local artist Callum Morton. The building cannot be entered and it has no purpose aside from being an interesting structure on the motorway. Before we go on... He did good with that one. I can't even lie to y'all. He did good with that one. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. Australia's Asbestos mm. Town. If you walk near the entrance to Whitnoom Township in Western Australia, you'll find a sign that says, Warning, asbestos fibers and dust are present and may be airborne in and around Whitnoom. Indicated in this sign are the various health hazards of asbestos. Most people would immediately turn around upon seeing this sign, but there are also those whose curiosity would be further fueled by this warning. This is Australia's infamous asbestos town. It's nestled in the heart of the Hammersley Range, about 870 miles north of Perth, Whittenham. Back in the 1930s, this place was once a bustling hub, teeming with life. It's all thanks to blue asbestos in the area. This discovery mm -hmm. led to the establishment of mining operations, which at their peak employed about 20,000 men, women, and children. With this resource, Whittenham easily transformed into a bustling community, with many making a living around the asbestos mines. But of course, the town's success wasn't infinite. The blue asbestos mined in Whittenham, also known as chrysidolite, is considered the most deadly of all mm -hmm. asbestos types. This didn't deter the miners and the town's residents, who were likely unaware of the risks they were taking. Asbestos dust wasn't just confined to the mines. It found its way into homes, schools, gardens, and even the local racetrack, creating a permanent, deadly haze over the town. Back then, residents lived in the area, blissfully unaware of the lurking danger. Children played in backyards contaminated with asbestos tailings and wives shook out their husbands' dusty work clothes, mm. unwittingly exposing themselves to the lethal fibers. It's estimated that at least 25% of the people who worked in the mine will eventually succumb to mesotheliomia, or another asbestos-related disease. It wasn't until the late 1970s that this place was shut down due to growing health concerns. By 2007, Whitnum was officially erased from maps and road signs, with authorities strongly discouraging any visits to the area. Despite this, a few adventurous souls continue to visit this town. It doesn't look like visits here will stop anytime soon unless tighter security gets implemented around the area. Would you be interested in visiting this place if you get the chance? I guess history lovers and those who are into urban exploration would love to take a look at this decaying settlement in person. Mm -mm. Number 18. No. The town where it rains fish. 
Imagine watching the news and hearing that tomorrow's forecast will be fishy rain. Well, that's probably what folks in the remote Australian town of Lajamanu hear sometimes. You see, this town located on the northern fringes of the Tanami Desert has quite an interesting phenomenon. In this place, it sometimes rains fish. Yes, you heard that right. In fact, they've experienced it not once, but four times in the last 50 years. That's not a lot, but this phenomenon known as fish rains is something incredibly rare. So this event happening over four times is already considered a lot. The first recorded instance in Lajamanu was over 40 years ago. And since then, there have been occurrences in 1974, 2004, and 2010. The most recent- So, two things. Are we sure this isn't like a plane flying over and accidentally some kind of way like drop this fish over this town? And then my second thing is, are you eating it? I see a few people picking it up off the ground. Are you eating it? <laughs> my question is to y'all. Fish rain happened just a decade ago. This bizarre event involves live fish, often spangled perch, raining down from the sky amidst heavy precipitation. It's thought that this phenomenon is caused by strong updrafts, such as tornadoes, which suck water and fish from rivers and then mm. drop them many kilometers away during a storm. Residents have often rushed to gather these fish, viewing it as a surprising and unexpected bounty from the skies. Number 17. I didn't think about that. Tornado, that's, the, yeah, that could definitely be a, a possibility. Largest earthworms. Do you dislike earthworms? If you get uncomfortable at the idea of these tiny critters touching you, then be thankful that you don't live in Australia. After all, it's home to the largest earthworms in the world. These creatures can achieve remarkable lengths, not only reaching up to six feet, but extending 10 feet long. Discovered in 1878 by railway workers in Victoria's Gippsland region, these giants initially caused quite a stir, being mistaken for snakes due to their enormous size. But despite their size, these worms are completely harmless. They help maintain the ground and keep it healthy. These creatures create extensive burrow systems of up to five feet deep, mostly for their survival, as they need their habitat moist all the time. But in turn, these creatures keep the soil they reside in fertile. Those who have heard these earthworms move underground claim that they produce a sound similar to water draining from a bathtub. Again, these guys play a crucial ecological role as detritivores, feeding on decaying organic matter and helping in nutrient cycling, thus enriching the soil. These worms are not only harmless to humans, but also essential for maintaining healthy ecosystems. Number 16. All I see is good fishing bait right there. That's what I was thinking about the entire time. Oh man, catch me a good bass off of one of those. Moth larger than a human hand. I guess Australia really has some of the most astounding wildlife. Just look at this giant moth that's the size of a human hand. This particular creature is a gray moth. More specifically, the giant wood moth. I never realized moths could grow so large. The biggest of right. these creatures weighed an astounding 30 grams. And who knows, there might be a bigger, larger specimen out there in the wild. The moths in this photo are known as rain moths. As their name suggests, they're usually seen as the harbingers of rain. Their emergence from underground pupil cases is triggered by the autumn showers, signaling a time for them to mate and lay eggs. While their forecasting ability might not always be spot on, the old farming legend that links their appearance to imminent rain holds a special place in local culture. What? So even if many are quite spooked by their appearance, no one really harms them, <laughs> drives them away. After all, these creatures have quite a short lifespan, only about 24 hours after hatching. Yeah, if you heard that right. The only purpose of these creatures after hatching is to mate and lay eggs. They have no mouths to feed, so it's kind of their predetermined destiny, I guess. Hmm. Number 15. Australian golf course home to bull sharks. I think golf is a great sport, but alas, I have no experience playing it. So forgive me if I'm not up to date with the sports lingo. Golfers playing a round of golf in Queensland, Australia, particularly at the Carbrook Golf Club near Brisbane, have to be extra careful not to play near the water. No, it's not because of the risk of a water ball or a water hazard, but because of sharks. Yep, you heard that right. You see, the lake on the 14th hole in this club is home to these apex predators. 
I know it doesn't really make much sense. <laughs> In order to understand how these sharks ended up inside the golf course, we have to go back to 1996. After severe flooding, young bull sharks from a nearby river found their way into the 51-acre lake at the golf course. As the floodwaters receded, the sharks were left stranded in the lake. Initially, six bull sharks were swept into the lake, and it's believed that their population has grown over time. Some of you might be thinking, bull sharks? In a lake? Aren't sharks saltwater creatures? The majority of them are, but a small number of them are pretty good at adapting to their habitats. Bull sharks, for instance, are known for their ability- now look at us, feeding them. Look at us. So now we gotta deal with bull sharks and alligators on the golf course? What else do we need? To thrive in salt and freshwater environments. This adaptability stems from their specially adapted kidneys and rectal glands, which work together to regulate and retain salt in their bodies. A crucial ability for survival in different water salinities. Despite being in an entirely freshwater environment, these sharks have thrived in the golf course's lake, thanks to its large stock of fish. And yes, sometimes the club staff also feeds the sharks. As scary as it is, the presence of these sharks has turned the golf course into a unique tourist attraction. Golfers and visitors alike can observe these sharks swimming close to the shore as they play, which can be quite an interesting experience. Number 14. Mm -mm. Snow White Beach most people love to find the greatest white sand beaches around the world. But how would you like to go to a beach where the sand isn't sand at all, but rather small white cockles? This is a snow white beach in Western Australia. And unlike others, this one offers its guests a stunning shore of billions of tiny white cockle shells. This is Shell Beach, a unique and wondrous natural attraction situated in the Shark Bay region stretching for about 37 miles and reaching depths between 23 and 33 feet. Shell Beach is one of only two beaches in the world made entirely from shells. The beach owes its existence to the prolific shark bait cockle, Frago marigatum, which thrives in the high salinity waters of the Laharidin Bight, the saline environment of the bay. Influenced by the geomorphology and local climate, has allowed these cockles to flourish as their natural predators struggle to adapt to the salty conditions. As the cockles live and die, their shells accumulate, forming the incredible expanse of Shell Beach. In the past, these abundant shells were compressed into a particular limestone called coquina. This limestone was quarried and used for constructing several buildings in the nearby town of Denham. Nowadays, Shell Beach is part of the Shark Bay World Heritage Area, and while special licenses are still granted to mine the shells for purposes like calcium for mulch and poultry feed, the beach itself is protected. Now this is definitely on my to-do list. Have any of you visited? If so, let me know how your visit went in the comments down below. Number 13. Australia's Pink Lake Australia is home to many natural wonders, but perhaps this is among the most bizarre. Australia's Pink Lake. This lake varies in color from soft pastel pink to a deep vibrant hue, creating a surreal and picturesque landscape. The famous Pink Lake is located in Western Australia's Goldfields Esperance region. Historically, Pink Lake was known for its striking pink color, which resulted from a combination of factors, including the presence of the green algae Dunalelia salina and the Halobacterium Halobacterium cuterubrum. These microorganisms thrive in the lake's high salt concentration, and under the right conditions, they produce a red pigment called beta-carotene, which gives the water its pink color. Unfortunately, in the late 2000s, the Pink Lake lost its signature pink hue. This is primarily because of the changes in salinity due to human activities. The construction of the South Coast Highway and a railway line altered the flow of water into the lake, reducing its salinity and impacting its color. Despite losing its pink color, the lake remains a site of interest, particularly for bird watchers, as it's a prime spot for birds of a different species to gather. Number 12. Floating forest. <clears throat> a floating forest? How does that work? Life seems to have no problem thriving, even in the most unlikely mm -hmm. places on Earth. Take, for instance, this abandoned SS airfield that's now the location of a floating forest in Sydney's Homebush Bay. This decaying metal is a 102-year-old ship originally used to transport coal between Newcastle and Sydney until the Second World War, when it was then used to supply American troops in the Pacific. And now, it's transformed into the floating forest. 
After the shipwrecking operation ceased in 1972, the SS Airfield, along with several other decommissioned ships, was left abandoned. Nature took over, and the rusted hull of the SS Airfield is now home to a lush growth of mangrove trees and other vegetation, creating a stunning and surreal landscape amid an urban area. I'm pretty sure many photos of this magnificent forest are scattered around the internet. Not only is this forest a biome for many plants, but several birds and insects also call it home. Number 11. Strawberry Needles In 2018, Australia's strawberry industry faced a severe crisis as reports of needles found in store-bought strawberries emerged across all six states. Whoa. The customer claimed they bought a box of strawberries, where they always do, and found a needle inside, despite the box the being adequately sealed. What began as an isolated incident in Queensland quickly escalated as reports of needles were found in Western and Southern Australia. While the majority of individuals who discovered metallic needles in strawberries reportedly avoided harm, an exception occurred with a 21-year-old man from Queensland. Oh, he accidentally man. bit into a needle, swallowing a portion of it, leading to his hospitalization. Yes, pause the video because you're just like me. I have a, a thing of strawberries in my fridge right now, and I just go wash them all, grab them, peel the little top part off, and eat them. Like... Never once thought about a needle being in my strawberry, but glad I saw this video because now you for sure know I'm checking every one of them before we eat them. Due to abdominal pain, with patrons in a people? panic, some growers recalled their strawberries and used metal detectors to restore consumer confidence. Even Smart. so, strawberry prices declined to an all-time low. The source of the issue remained unclear, and the needle's insertion point in the supply chain was unknown. The Queensland Strawberry Growers Association suggested a disgruntled employee might be responsible, while others speculated copycat incidents. The deliberate act of inserting sharp needles into strawberries was strongly condemned as a vicious crime and deemed a general attack on the public. Consumers were urged to slice strawberries before consumption, and the Queensland government offered a reward for relevant information. I'm getting thinking about it. Why would a sick person do that? Why would he do that to somebody? You're not even going to be around for the satisfaction of whatever you're trying to gain from doing this. You're not going to see them. You may hear about it on the news if you're lucky. So I don't even understand why somebody would even try to do this to someone. However, no one was ever apprehended for the crime. Number 10. Ladybug Invasion Did you know that ladybugs, just like most insects, are attracted to flowers and herbs? Including, but not limited to, cilantro, dill, fennel, caraway, yarrow, scented geraniums, and cosmos, among others. Mm. For this reason, these are usually used to attract these insects. We know a good amount of information about ladybugs. Still, despite that, no one knows the reason why millions of them began converging in a remote radio tower near Mount Burr in South Australia. The ladybugs are not just numerous, they're covering the radio tower in massive numbers, creating a sea of red and black. According to wildlife photographer Stephen Chappell, who saw the situation firsthand, the ladybugs gathered in such density that they were several inches deep around the base of the tower, which measures approximately 5 meters by 5 meters. This suggests that the number of ladybugs was in the millions. The reason behind the massive gathering of ladybugs is not entirely clear. Experts from the University of Adelaide speculated on a couple of potential reasons. One theory is that these gatherings are mating aggregations which makes mm. it easier for the beetles to find mates. Another possibility is that clustering in such large numbers might offer protection against predators, particularly birds. The exact reason remains a bit of a mystery. Okay. Number 9. Bizarre Cylinder on the Beach In 2023, beachgoers were surprised when they were welcomed by a mysterious gold-colored cylinder on a beach near Greenhead, a small town about 155 miles north of Perth, Australia. Initially, there was much speculation about the origins of this particular item. Some wild guesses ranged from parts of the missing MH370 flight to unidentified sea creatures. But as it turned out, the real answer is quite out of this world, literally and figuratively. According to an amateur detective on Reddit, and later supported by Dr. Alice Gorman, a space archaeology expert, the cylinder appears to be a part of a polar satellite launch vehicle rocket from India. Experts explained that fuel tanks from rockets, after being used, often fall into the ocean. 
This particular cylinder likely spent a considerable amount of time on the seafloor, becoming a habitat for marine life like barnacles, before a storm eventually swept it ashore. She reassured the public that while rocket fuels can be toxic, this object, being solid fuel, was generally safe unless burned. The Australian Space Agency also chimed in, suggesting the possibility that the cylinder could be from a foreign space launch vehicle. Western Australia police, after analyzing the object, declared it safe and not a risk to the community. So if you ever see a bizarre cylinder in the ocean, just know that it has a good chance of being from a satellite launched up in space. Number 8. Demon Shark Demon. As if there are not enough creatures in the ocean that make people wary, a new shark species was discovered in the waters off Australia's coast, the Demon Cat Shark. It all began in 2011, when a bizarre-looking shark egg was discovered on Australia's Kimberley coast. Unlike other shark eggs, this had T-shaped ridges that were a bit of a head-scratcher for the researchers. It turned out that these bizarre-looking eggs matched that of a female cat shark. However, it's different from others. Thus, the demon cat shark, scientifically named Apristurus ovicorigatus, was identified. What sets the demon cat shark apart from its relatives is its striking bright white eyes, a rare feature for deep sea sharks. This peculiar characteristic has sparked curiosity and speculation among scientists about the evolutionary reasons behind it. The demon cat shark belongs to a genus known for its diversity, with around 40 known species. However, A. ovicorigatus is unique due to its glowing eyes and the depth at which it's found, typically over 2,300 feet. These cat sharks lay their eggs on coral, and their elusive nature is partly due to the depths at which they live. To this day, much about these creatures remains unknown. Number 7. Kangaroo Gang In the quaint coastal town of Maroom, Australia, the residents are experiencing a rather unusual and somewhat humorous predicament. This tiny town, home to just 220 people and located about 150 miles north of Brisbane, has found itself under siege by a gang of 80 aggressive kangaroos. The situation has become so dire that locals, including an elderly woman who was almost harmed by these animals, have resorted to carrying sticks for defense. Eastern gray kangaroos, typically a common sight in Australia, have overrun Maroom in recent months, lounging on lawns and hopping through town. On some occasions, Residents have reported seeing up to 15 kangaroos congregating on a single lawn. I think kangaroos be looking for action. It ain't like they just be out here and something happened to them. I think they be looking for action for the day. <laughs> Who can they throw hands with? Who can they go after? You know what I mean? The count exceeding 60 to 80 kangaroos on any given day. These numbers are considered unusually high for the area. The kangaroo's aggressive behavior towards humans in Maroom is quite rare and concerning. The reason for this sudden influx of kangaroos and their unusual behavior might be linked to the town's lush lawns. The well-maintained laws of Maroom have inadvertently become an attractive feeding ground for these kangaroos, likened humorously by a resident to a sizzler smorgasbord. Regardless of the reason, the congregation of these creatures in the village has turned out to be quite a huge problem. Number 6. The world's largest toad. Yo. If you're scared of toads, you what? might be delighted to hear this. The world's largest toad has been discovered. The larger they are, the easier it'll be to avoid them, right? This is Damn. Toadzilla, a massive cane toad discovered by rangers in Queensland's Conway National Park, and it's believed to be the heaviest toad ever discovered. After Yo, all that joke there has been doing is working out and drinking whey protein his entire life. I don't know how he got a hold to it. But fam, do you see this? I've never seen a frog toad, whatever you want to call it, that big. For all, the giant toad weighs uh. almost six pounds. Cane toads, originally from Central and South America, were introduced to Australia in 1935 to control cane beetles damaging sugarcane crops. However, this plan backfired spectacularly. The toads- Look at the legs on that joke. And I just tried frog legs for the first time in February, I think that was, yeah. My, the legs I had were nowhere near the size of those, man. <laughs> nowhere near. It had little impact on the beetle population, but thrived in the Australian environment, leading to what a rapid and uncontrollable that? spread. Now numbering in the millions, these toads pose a significant threat to local ecosystems. The average cane toad usually weighs around three pounds and measures four to six inches. 
making Toadzilla an extraordinary specimen. <laughs> Female cane toads, like Toadzilla, can lay an Toadzilla. astonishing number of eggs, <laughs> ranging from 8,000 to 30,000 at a time. Their rapid reproduction, combined with a lack of natural predators in Australia, has allowed them to spread aggressively. What makes these toads particularly dangerous is the poison they release from glands above their shoulders, which can be fatal to animals that try to eat them. Toadzilla's final fate? Toadzilla. Well, let's just say that it had a peaceful end. Number 5. The Smiling Critter Take a look at this photo. Looks cute, doesn't it? And yes, that creature is smiling right at the camera. This animal is the quokka, and recently they've garnered the attention of several people online. These adorable creatures, native to Western Australia, particularly Rottnest Island, have won the hearts of many with their endearing smiles. Famous for posing for selfies with tourists, they've garnered the title of the happiest animal on Earth. I mean, they certainly look like it, don't you think? Quokkas are part of the macropod family, making them close relatives of kangaroos and wallabies. But these creatures are small, only about the size of a domestic cat. While they're mainly nocturnal and herbivorous, Quokkas have been known to venture out during the day, especially when they sense the opportunity for a close-up with humans. But don't let their friendly demeanor fool you. These creatures are wild animals and can bite or scratch if they feel threatened. Okay, but are these creatures actually smiling? I hate to disappoint you, mm -hmm. but not really. Quokkas have a natural grin-like expression, but it's not because they're smiling. Experts believe it's just a quirk of the species similar to the natural expression seen in dolphins or axolotls. But hey, smiling or not, they're cute regardless. Number 4. Village of Gnomes If you venture into Ferguson Valley near Dardana, you'll find the weirdest village in the region, Gnomesville. As its name suggests, this charming little village has a population of about 7,000. And of course, they're all gnomes. Legend has it that the village began with a single gnome, Placed as a whimsical protest against a controversial roundabout at the intersection of Wellington Mill Road, this lone gnome set the stage for what would become an overgrowing community. Tourists, sporting clubs, mothers groups, and individuals from all over the world have contributed to the gnome population, leaving behind a diverse array of gnomes representing their cultures, memories, and tributes to loved ones. From gnomes riding school buses and flying airplanes to those chilling on logs or hanging from trees, the creativity on display is boundless. The village even houses gnomes from popular culture. The gnomes, made from various materials like wood, plastic, plaster, and ceramic, are grouped in delightful and often humorous scenes. You'll find witty signs like Sydney gnome, not going home, or better gnomes in gardens. Despite facing- oh, yeah, I thought I seen one in the beginning say like, gnomey homies or something like that. I thought I saw it. Challenges like weather damage, the gnome community continues to thrive, thanks to the efforts of visitors and gnome enthusiasts alike. So again, if any of you guys have visited this village before, feel free to share how your experience went in the comments down below. Number 3. The Longest Fence in the World Australia is home to the world's longest fence, famously known as the Dingo Fence. This remarkable structure spans an impressive 5,614 kilometers, about 3,488 miles, making it one of the most extensive man-made structures on the planet. It was primarily constructed to protect the southeastern parts of Australia, particularly the sheep grazing lands from dingoes and other wild predators. The fence's journey began in the mid-1800s when safeguarding livestock from predators became a priority. It underwent several expansions and modifications over the years. Despite its initial purpose, the dingo fence has had a significant environmental impact, particularly on wildlife movement and ecosystem balance. For instance, areas where dingoes are excluded have seen an overabundance of species like foxes and kangaroos. This imbalance has led to discussions on the fence's future role in Australia's environment and livestock industry. The maintenance of this colossal fence is a massive undertaking, involving a collaborative effort from multiple states and costing about $10 million annually. Well, with its size, this is hardly a surprise. Number 2. A Lost Continent Imagine a landmass known as Argoland that broke off from the supercontinent Gondwana about 155 million years ago. This ancient continent, once adjoined to what is now Western Australia, embarked on a mysterious journey northwestward and, quite intriguing, vanished. For years, 
The fate of Argoland perplexed geologists. The main clue to its existence was the Argo Abyssal Plain, a vast basin in the ocean off Western Australia, a kind of geological footprint left behind after the separation. Scientists speculated that remnants of Argoland should be buried beneath Southeast Asia. Yep. See, this is what I think be happening when we start experiencing uh, like an influx of earthquakes, like a lot of them. I, I be thinking this is what's going on. Certain continents and different things are starting to break off parts of it and they're going to form new islands or something like that. This is what I be thinking. No concrete evidence of such a landmass was found until recently. As it turned out, Argoland didn't travel as a single piece, but shattered into fragments, now lying beneath Myanmar in Indonesia, far from its original location. And now, it's time for today's topic. A person was flying their drone when they found this terrifying new discovery hidden in Australia. Most of you probably know about the Marie Man, also known as Stewart's Giant. This is a modern geoglyph that was only discovered in 1998. Recently, there have been speculations that this geoglyph isn't the only one in Australia, and that others are hidden in plain sight. You see, the Marine Man itself remains a mystery to this day. Despite being discovered more than two decades ago, we're yet to know who created this massive geoglyph. There are speculations, but nothing has been confirmed. Now, there are theories that other art etched on Earth's surface is hidden on the continent, waiting to be found. Well, with Australia's sheer size, it does sound probable. Number one, largest fossil of a trapdoor spider. Guess we couldn't leave Australia without talking about a spider first, huh? God! In the central tablelands of New South Wales, Australia, scientists made a groundbreaking discovery. A massive fossil of a trapdoor spider named Megamonodontium McCluskeyi. This prehistoric spider was more than five times the size of its modern relatives. I'm sure Jeez. many of you are thankful that this creature has ceased to exist. I myself included. The study of this ancient spider, believed to have lived between 11 to 16 million years ago, sheds light on the evolutionary history of spiders in Australia. Experts discovered that the closest living relative of this fossil is found in wet forests from Singapore to Papua New Guinea, suggesting that similar environments once existed in mainland Australia, but have since gone extinct due to arid conditions. 